welcome to our home. I'm Dr. Russ. You're in Southeast Michigan. In fact, to be more accurate than that, you're in Paula's kitchen in Southeast Michigan. And uh, we're gonna have some fun today. I wanna thank Hollowhead for getting all of these pellets and slugs out for uh, a little information sharing today. We're going to address a big concern and that's always which pellet, which slug is best for my rifle. And uh, if you watch a lot of videos on YouTube, the basic advice is try a bunch of them, you'll find one that works. Well, my goodness, that can be pretty expensive advice. I probably have about 25% more pellets and slugs than you see even here. I spent an enormous amount of money trying to find out that very answer to that very question. So we're gonna to cut to the chase today. We're gonna to find out good information, I think, on pellets and slugs and how we might pick and use the best pellets possible for our gun much sooner. Let's see if that's true. Uh, we have over 550 subscribers, thank you so much, and over 55,000 viewers now from all over the world. So we're uh, a little humbled by that, but it also lets us know how important subjects like the one we're covering today can be. And let's get started. One of the ways to teach us more about pellets and slugs is to look at what's happened to bullets because bullets have been around 150 years longer than pellets have. Let's see what's happened there. If you look right here for comparison purposes only, we have a 17 caliber BB. And right next to it is a 17 caliber bullet. Yes, the diameter of that bullet and that BB are the same. 17, this is very flat shooting out to uh, four and 500 yards. It travels at about 3,500 feet a second and it can take out woodchucks and prairie dogs and, and critters way out beyond uh, the normal vision that we see shooting BBs. That's 17 caliber. Right here is probably one of the most popular bullets out there, a 22 long rifle. Uh, these are so popular, they're sold in bricks. A brick is 500 of these boxed together. A favorite of mine is this 22 Magnum. Same bullet as this, but much more powder. I really like this. It's a good shooter out to about 200 yards. And what is this one here? Well, this is one that I used in Vietnam. You'll find it in AR-15s, M16s, etc. It's called the 223, and it's also 22 caliber. That's in the diameter. But the question is, um, how much powder is behind it? Because that makes all the difference in the world in terms of speed, velocity, and energy that hits the target. Right next to it, is a, uh, a target version of this. You'll actually see if you look carefully, there's a hollow head on it, but it's still 5.56. What are 22 caliber pellets? 5.5, this is 5.56. I think the real story can just be told with this bullet right here. This is a 300 Savage. Let's drop the last zero. It's a 30 caliber Savage. Certainly you know about 3030 30 Winchesters. Drop the second 30, it's a 30 caliber bullet like this, built for lever action rifles. It has a different casing on the back, but the barrel, that hole in the barrel is pretty much the same. What about a 30 odd six? The odd six is talking about how much casing and how much powder is behind the 30 caliber bullet. That brings us to 308s. 300 Winchesters, 300 Weatherbees, 300 Winchester Magnums. We're just picking up a bigger case, more velocity, more energy. So most of the hunting in America is done with 30 caliber bullets. That's important for us to remember in our own uh, shooting with air guns. Notice this has a round top. Uh, that's the difference between that and the last calibers I, I mentioned which have a sharp point. What does that mean? Well all 30 calibers, in fact all bullets that are in a tubular 
fashion. Some 22s are in tubular. Uh, we don't want a sharp point that could be hitting that primer and causing it to discharge, particularly if you drop the gun butt first into the ground real hard. Uh, that could shoot off a bunch of, of bullets inside that tube that run underneath the barrel um, if that was a sharp point. So if it's a bolt action or some other type, it, uh, it's a sharp point. When it's in a tubular fashion, it's a round point. Let's also take a quick look at these pistol rounds. These are hollow heads. Now I'm not real enamored with hollow heads in uh, hunting. Uh, hollow heads play a definite role in home defense and protection. Uh, what they do is they turn a 30 caliber into a 40 or 50 because it mushrooms easier. Uh, these are hollow heads. These are just lead bullets, some very old lead bullets. This is an interesting one. That's not lead. It's not a hollow point either. It's a snake shot. It's got tiny, tiny BBs in there, smaller than 17 caliber. And you carry it as the first couple of rounds in your handgun so that when a rattlesnake lifts its ugly head in front of you out west, you can take its head off pretty easy with just that round. These are wad cutters. They're just flat bullets and they're very, very popular, and they're popular in air guns too because they leave a perfectly round hole in the target for scoring purposes. Here are solid uh, brass bullets, harder than lead, and uh, they have a little bit more knockdown power because of that. These are interesting. These are Teflon covered. Perhaps you saw uh, advertisements as a young person when they put Teflon in the bottom of a, a frying pan and the egg wouldn't stick to that frying pan because of it. Well, Teflon coated bullets allow a bullet to even hit things like a bulletproof vest, go through the bulletproof vest and out the back because it's slipping through that, that material. So all kinds of bullets have come along in the powder family for years and we can learn from them. One of the things we'll note is that all of these powder bullets are very shiny and glossy because they have to travel through wind and they must stay on course. With that being said, let's take a look here at 17 caliber air guns. Here's your 17 caliber BB. And then right next to it here is a Crossman Premier um, Piranha. You can see the, the uh, uh, tin right here with, uh, it's kind of like a hollow head with a pretty fancy opening in the top. Um, next to it is this uh, 17 caliber pellet with a little red uh, point on it. Uh, this was kind of invented, I think, way back by a guy named uh, Nosler, who invented for powder guns the Nosler partition. This piece of plastic in a hollow head makes it just that much easier to open up and become twice as big, but it also allows it to travel through the air like a pointed hunter round would be. Uh, this is the next bullet. These are Crossman um, hollow heads, and it's probably one of Crossman's best sellers. There's a very tiny hollow head in the top of that to, uh, to see. Um, I like that because I think big hollow heads flying at, at velocities of air guns are not quite as good as a pointed. And now we see uh, the flathead, uh, wad cutter, uh, ready for target practicing, leaves a nice point, a uh, uh, nice hole in the target. Here's another one. Here's uh, a traditional uh, bullet right here. These are from a company called Sig Sauer. Now you probably haven't seen uh, a lot of Sig Air pellets out yet. They've just come out. Uh, Sig is a big German company, a quality company, and they uh, they've started manufacturing pellets in uh, Brazil, of all places. From these 17 calibers, I do want to bring your attention to these 22s right here. This is uh, rather interesting. This pellet right here is a wad cutter from long, long ago, uh, Crossman, and that was solid lead. Now that's not good. Solid lead corrodes. Uh, solid lead is very soft. You can actually take a, a thumbnail and make a, a dent in it. 
So as the years went by, certain alloys were put in with the lead to make them harder and better. And that's why you see other pellets even lighter than this old 100% lead pellet. With that understanding, let's uh, uh, take a look over here at 22 calibers. Uh, this first group is uh, from a, a very large company, uh, Gamo. Uh, Gamo is uh, big in Spain. They make over a billion pellets a year because pellets are very big in Europe. And so what we have there is, uh, again, a copy of a Nosler partition bullet with a little red insert. It flies well, and once it hits, the hollow head expands. Brass is harder than lead, so we can also get pellets uh, in brass. And they hold together good, and they're very smooth. I like that smoothness. It flies through the air a lot smoother. Now we get right here to a 22 caliber, and uh, the tin for these is right up above us here, the, the Crossman Premiers. Again, they don't want that uh, hollow head to be very big because uh, it creates wind turbulence and can come off course. So knowing how much people want hollow heads, they make a hollow head, but it's quite small. Next to it is the Premier Hunter's Point, well, a sharp point, also very popular pellet. And it's right next to it here. So this pellet goes into a point, if you will. Next to it are two pellets that look like pretty close. One's a Crossman, one's a, uh, a Gamo. They have slightly different names, but they look the same. And I want you to look at them even closer. What's the difference between these two? This one over here has a shinier uh, metal part than this. That means this is more lead. This has got more alloy, alloy in it and would be stronger uh, in the wind and in, in an animal. And then lastly, we get back over here to some 22 caliber uh, Sig Air pellets from Brazil. Uh, this is what they call their Zero, or for good target practicing, this is their Venom, which again copies just the old round head style of pellets uh, that are so very, very important. Now, let me stop there for just a moment and let you know something about pellets. I think we can all agree that pellets go down a barrel and they have four contact points with the rifling in a barrel. Four places where the rifle is saying, let's spin, let's look like a football going downfield. Air compressed air is behind it, coming up in this uh, hollow point in the back, pushing it out. Well, what if we weren't getting four contact points? What if this skirt was partially damaged and we were only getting three contact points with the rifling? Now when the pellet leaves the barrel, we get something that's wobbling. Take a look at that. And here are two pellets that I found in miscellaneous cans that show skirts that aren't perfectly round. So one of our uh, purposes is uh, uh, to inspect pellets and uh, give them a little inspection. They get an inspection at the factory, but I've, I've seen it, and you don't get much of an inspection. A girl might put uh, 200 pellets in front of her on a plate, spin them around looking, and uh, the inspection lasts about two seconds. So uh, it means we might just have to inspect them ourselves to make sure that's not the case. Now, let's take a look at another pellet. This one has left the barrel. This one is going down range. What do we see here? Well, the compressed air is still giving it a good push, but it's hitting air. And so we wanna look at a magnifying glass and make sure the head of this thing is quite smooth. Something you'll see on a lot of pellets, I didn't draw it on this, but uh, they're stamped together, two halves, and they leave a, a line on this side and another uh, line on the other side. All of these, uh, irregularities create wind turbulence and cause a pellet to be more of a flyer than more of a, uh, let's put one on top of the other. Another interesting thing is that this pellet is shaped like a birdie that we use for badminton. So as the heavy solid lead goes down, pushing through the air, 
the air comes around it and then sucks in and comes onto this skirt. Well, you know that a birdie is made of feathers back here and the air on that drags it. So that makes sure that this part of the pellet will stay downrange and this part will stay uprange as it travels rather than any sort of tumbling or wobbling effect. That's what this is all about, that air would pick it up. Now, one of the things that's happening and one of my messages to you today is that we are slowly but surely moving to slugs. Probably another 10 or 12 years, you're gonna see all guns offering uh, slugs. Why? Well, the compressed air has been building and building uh, between the manufacturers of air guns. And today, the amount of air compression is not a big issue. In fact, we got more air than we actually need. But by having a slug, we pick up a lot of contact with the barrel, a lot of rifling that says spin, and we're more solid. And when we're more solid, that means more energy. Because when you conduct the foot-pounds of energy at a target, one of the things you use is velocity, but the other thing is, what did this thing weigh? And together, they make up that uh, energy. So I want you to be ready for that when it happens. One thing that we can't do very well, maybe not even safely, is to combine slugs with our air rifles today. There's a problem, some shoot them fine, but there's a couple of problems. The first problem is that uh, a lot of the newer air guns for, for uh, pellets is um, got a, uh, a choked barrel. What does that mean? That means towards the end of the barrel, it gets a little bit tighter, a couple of thousands, gets a little tighter and just makes that very fast speeding pellet give a little bit faster spin at the very end. And uh, that will uh, uh, make it more accurate. Well, the barrels of air guns are like a straw inside of a, an outer barrel. And uh, that outer barrel is acting kind of like a modulator or silencer for the whole uh, gun. Uh, but that barrel is thin. Like I say, it's about like a straw. So uh, when we send pellets down that barrel, picking up rifling in that barrel, we've got to be very careful uh, about uh, that. We don't want anything that will burn that up. And slugs could have a greater effect on that than not. So we want to be careful there. So let me share with you in this first half of our video, uh, because part two is coming next week, but the three secrets of good air pellets and, and, and slugs would be the following. Number one, we want to wash them. You can wash them in a bowl uh, with uh, Dawn detergent, anything that helps cut grease. And when you remove them, you're gonna be shocked at all the particles from manufacturing process that's still in there. And we've got rid of that because now when you have your gun upright, uh, all that crap is not in your barrel dripping down. You're gonna wash them and put them in a strainer like this, then put water to completely rinse them, and then we let them dry. The second thing that we wanna do with our pellets and slugs is we wanna lube them. Now, some of you say, wait a minute, I, I heard we're not supposed to lube. Well, let me assure you, bullets are lubed, and a lot of people lube their pellets. Uh, as well as their bullets. And here's why you do it and how you don't do it. First of all, we don't use any oil or lube when we come to these old springers because they have leather seals on them and leather and oil don't mix. Those leather seals break right down. Uh, right along if we let a bunch of particles drop down into that area of the gun too when it's being stored. So that's why we want the pellets washed. That's why we want them lubed. Now, what do we lube them with? We don't want sloppy, drippy oil that will drip down. That doesn't help any of the internals of a gun. Uh, there's a product called Shooter's Choice, uh, FP10, I think are the numbers. And it's actually used to spray bullets and pellets with. It's not a, it's not a flimsy, light oil. This is like half of a lube and half of oil. 
And when it gets onto bullets and stuff, it clings to it and stays with it. That's what we want. Uh, I use fogging oil. You'll find it at the automobile stores. Uh, we put it on motorcycle engines and snowmobile engines and ATV engines during the off season and it keeps those beautiful uh, uh, aluminum heads and, and engines shiny rather than after a year in uh, storage of corroding and turning a dull gray. We spray them with fogging oil. Fogging oil clings and stays with that pellet or bullet. Now you know a piston and an engine going up and down uses that oil to help compression and maintains the compression of the engine. It also does a cooling factor. I'm not worried about that. I am worried about maintaining compression. Better compression means that pellet will leave the barrel better and spiraling like a football better. So we want that on our pellets after we wash and rinse them. And then the third thing that we want to do, regardless of what pellets you end up using, is we want to use these um, uh, Air Venturi. Uh, they're not the only ones who make them. Several companies do, but it is a cotton type uh, pellet. They're made in 17 caliber, 22 and 25 caliber. Uh, you put them in the barrel and you shoot them when you're done hunting or done target practicing. And that takes whatever particles and oil that's in that barrel and blows them all out. They say, be careful, don't shoot somebody up close. It still comes out as a hot, fast flying wad, if you will. But just aim it down range and shoot these uh, uh, cotton pellets and it cleans out that barrel. Now when we store it, we don't have any worries at all of particles, anything getting down into the mechanism of that gun. Part two is gonna be next week and I'll cover the second half of this table. Well, let me say this about part two. Uh, number one, please consider giving us a thumbs up. You've heard me say before that if you don't, Google gives us a thumbs down. Uh, they've got to see your vote or they cast their vote. And what do a lot of thumbs up versus thumbs down mean? That means that we have a better chance of being exposed down the margin of your uh, computer or your cell phone or along the bottom, we get exposure so that you kind of remember us. Uh, without it, you're buried. Trying to find us is almost impossible. The second thing is leave your comments. We, I love comments. I try to uh, do it every morning, sit down and personally answer every comment. Is like, good, bad or ugly, I answer them. Um, and then thirdly, consider subscribing. Now you can always unsubscribe, but when you subscribe, what in the world are you doing? And the answer is, you're wanting to be on a list that's notified by Google that our next video is out. We introduce a new video every two weeks. That's what we've done for seven weeks, seven months, I mean. And uh, that's what's given us over 55,000 viewers. Uh, views over uh, this seven months, I think this people told me that we're setting some records. I'm glad for that. Thank you very much if you're participating. And they're global records. We got comments from people coming in from all over the world. <laughs> I sit there and answer them the best I can. Um, you might ask, why in the world am I wearing this hat today? Well, if you don't do some of the things we've taught you, uh, your pellets are gonna wander all around and, uh, its way to the target. Much like this tractor wandered across the top of my head. And uh, we don't want that. So stay tuned, subscribe, and if you do all of those things, I'll do my thing and we'll make you air gun sharp.